If you're looking to add more solar, maybe to your van or your RV, or maybe even a power station, we have two solutions for you. We're gonna tell you exactly why we would pick one over the other. If you have found Explorer Trek Adventure with Kelly and Greg, we cover everything camping from backpacking to adventure vans. Both of these solar panels are 200 watts. This is the Renogy Solar Suitcase. We purchased this a few years ago. And this is the Bouge RV Portable Solar Panel. They did send us this solar panel for review. And if you're interested in knowing how we handle free products, you can go check out this link on our website. This is not gonna be a super technical review. Why? Because both of these panels put out roughly 10 amps. The Bouge RV is slightly more efficient at 23.5 and the Renogy comes in at 22.4. So it's almost a wash for how much power they actually output. Now for us, it's more about form factor, usability, and the, the features that come with each panel. One of the most important things to me is weight. I don't want to be having to lug these huge, heavy things all around camp. Unfortunately, the Renogy comes in at a whopping 34 pounds, so it is hefty, where the Bouge RV is only 18 pounds. Still a bit of weight, but manageable. Our van is a little bit up off the ground, especially with our new tires. And getting this Renogy up there is harder than it should be. It definitely takes two hands to get up there. Where we're the Beaujeu RV, one-handed, easy, not an issue. After weight comes actual size. If we show these panels right on top of each other, you can see this is significantly smaller. It's actually way smaller than I think it was gonna be. And also for size reference, this is our little 60 watt panel. Now, if I turn these to the side, you can see how wide they are. And this way, they're actually a lot closer. This, the Bouge RV is definitely a little bit smaller, but it's, it's close. The size can be really important, especially when you're putting it into something like the van. If we have these sitting up like tall like this in the van, we can't get our bed all the way down. So we actually have to store these flat in the middle of the garage. Now let's show you how these set up. I normally am the one that actually sets these up and takes them down. So we're gonna have Kelly do it so you can kind of see it from the new person's perspective. I have actually set this up once before, but here it goes. Ta-da. So since the energy has this case, we do have to pick it up and put it somewhere. And most likely that's gonna go into the van. It might not seem like a big deal, but having such a limited space in the van, it's actually a nice feature that the Bouge RV is all just one piece. Now for the Bouge RV, I have not done this yet. So this will be a first time. Done. Now that they're set up, let me show you the features of each one. I'll start on the Renogy side. Let me flip it over, come look on the back side. We have here, this is something that it's not on the other panel, and this is a built-in charge controller. And this is kind of why they call it the solar suitcase, because it's an all-in-one package. This gives you the ability to basically hook this up to, uh, directly to a battery, because normally you can't connect a solar panel directly to a battery. There has to be a charge controller involved. Having this built into the panel makes it nice, because say like you have a dead battery in the van, this comes with some alligator clips and you can connect this whole thing up, connect it right to the battery and then be charging. You can't do that with the Bouge RV. When you're setting this up, you can plug in the solar panels to the charge controller, but the big thing to point out here is this is the length of lead you have to go out to your battery or whatever you're going to. And this is very similar. This is actually a little bit longer than the Bouge RV, but both panels do not come with like a super long cable. So that's something you're gonna have to buy extra. For reference, this is our 20 foot extension cable and we bought this one to go basically when we had a rooftop tent. But one thing we found out is 20 feet is not long enough. The plug for these goes in the back of the van and if I extend this out to the front, say I wanna put the panels at the front, well our van's almost 20 feet long, so it's not long enough. So I would pick the 30 foot if I had to do it again. Now let's look at the features of the Bouge RV panel. You can see it's significantly longer and if you come look from the side, if there's a little bit of a, kind of a ripple to it, it's not totally rigid like the Renogy panel. That thing's not gonna bend at all. This bends just a little bit, especially bends a little bit more once it heats up in the sun. If I lift up this panel, I can show you. These little kickstands are made from, I don't know what this material is. It's kind of interesting. It almost feels a little bit textured. The only downfall I can see so far is you can see what it's done in the dirt here. I kind of wish they had like plastic done plastic on the bottom and that way everything would stay clean because you can see it's getting kind of gross on the bottom 
but I don't think it's actually gonna hurt anything. Just aesthetically looking and it might stick to this material a little bit more. On these kickstands, when you pull them out, it's, I like the design. It's kind of like a bungee cord, but it's a strap and it definitely has some give to it so you can move it. It's not, it's not just stuck at one position. And then lastly, you can see it has this tiny little bag and inside the bag, you have the little cord that you have. And you can see that it's not very big. With this 20 foot extension cable and the Renogy, when it folds together, it creates some ca a cavity inside and we can store this inside. This is one thing I don't like about this Bouge RV panel is there's, there's no place to put this and you have to have this cord. It'd be kind of cool if somewhere on there, if there was a bigger, if this was like, you know, huge like this, then you could store your cable in there. Since this is a longer panel, unlike the Renogy, you can see it has three different kickstands that come out, but once it gets set up, it's pretty solid. Let's show you how you would plug in one of these panels into a portable power station. This is our Jackery 240, the old workhorse we've had forever. It just keeps going, it won't die. So when we look at the Renogy, we need to understand that this has its own charge controller built in. So you can plug solar panels directly in, which means we just need to bypass the solar or the charge controller on here. So we will plug these solar connectors in. Plugging it in and you can see we're getting 60 watts in. It'll only allow 80 watts, but we're pulling in 60 right now. And when you go to undo these, I have a love-hate relationship with these connectors. You have to push these two little prongs in. I don't know if I just don't have enough fingernails, but oftentimes they are a pain in the butt. And this is not because of this panel. These are just the way these connectors are. Now let's go check it out how it does on the Bouge RV. With this panel, we don't have to worry about bypassing the charge controller because there isn't one. And when you're doing these, plugging these in, there's no wrong way to do it because you can see black coming in here, black coming in here, but try to plug it into the red. They're just, it's impossible. So that's nice. You can't really screw it up. And I can see here, we're pulling in 67 watts. So you can see the Bouge RV is actually doing a little bit better. We have a Winnebago Revel and it, the solar output is in the worst possible spot. It's right there. It's on the inside of the van, terrible location. The big thing to know if you have one of these is the charge controller on the inside. Let me show you. And it's made by Zamp, the 40 amp. It's a nice controller, but Zamp in their infinite wisdom decided to reverse the polarity of their system. What does that mean? That means you need to, to figure out the polarity of the plug before you plug it in. Otherwise you're gonna blow a fuse and you'll have to replace fuse. It's a big pain in the butt. It's easy to check. If you don't know what reverse polarity means, that's totally okay. It just means they flip the wires. So the what normally was positive is up here is now down here and then negative, they just flip them. In order to check it, you just need a voltmeter, set it to volts. And when you touch it to the little connectors. You can see I'm just touching the black to the bottom, red to the top. You can see the needle goes up. That means we're in the correct polarity. So red is on top. If I were to flip them, touch red on the bottom, black. You can see the needle wants to go backwards. So we just know we have to plug red on top. If you look at our 20 foot extension cable, you can see here, I have a really small adapter. And if you notice here, red comes in and turns into black. Normally that would be terrible, but for a ZAMP system, that's perfect. If anybody knows why ZAMP did that, let me know. Before we plug in our first panel, let's show you what the van's pulling in by itself. Right now we have 200 watts up on the roof and they're flat and they're pulling in 7.5 amp. One reason why you wanna have a portable panel is yesterday, it was kind of an overcast day, we were pulling in 1.5 and I deployed one of the, the portable ones and that jumped up to 11. So it's a huge difference. You can't tilt these ones on the top, they just are what they are. I'm gonna go plug in the Renogy. You can watch that panel and see how many amps it adds. We're up to pulling 17.5 amps and you may be super, super excited until you remember that this thing pulls 98 amps. <laughs> but it is really awesome. Um, yesterday we pulled in an extra 20% to our batteries just by having the one solar panel deployed. I'm gonna go unplug the Renogy and plug in the Bouge RV. We're at 7.5 without any extra solar panels. We're plugging it in three, two. 
And that pumped up to 15.1. So plugging it into the van, the Renogy added 10 amps to the van, which is pretty awesome. And the Bouge RV added eight. Why the discrepancy? Technically, this one should have added more. I don't have any idea. I'm not even gonna guess. Strangely enough, it was pumping seven more watts into this. This guy did than the Renogy. There's a lot of variables when it comes to solar, whether it be the angle, how dirty they are. There's a ton of variables. It's kind of the long game when it comes to solar. It's these panels are gonna be out for, you know, seven or eight hours. So who are these good for? The van lifer, the RV, the people that are moving around a lot. I definitely think the Bouge RV is the way to go. Only because it is so much more compact, lightweight, and it gives us a lot of juice actually. So going forward, we're gonna be keeping that one in the van. Now, when it comes to the Renogy, this would probably be better for someone who's not really moving around a lot, maybe has an off-grid situation. It does have a lot more features and gives a lot of juice, but again, it comes with a hefty weight. So we originally bought the Renogy solar panel suitcase to go with our battery box that Greg built. He did a whole video about that. We'll put a link in the description so you can watch that if you like. But that was for our rooftop tent to power our refrigerator. If you've used either of these solar panels or maybe even another solar panel that maybe other people would find helpful, please let us know in the comments below. Solar can be confusing, so hopefully that was a little bit helpful to you. Go watch this video next. You can find us at ExploreTrekAdventure.com and we'll see you next time.